everyone and welcome to the conversation. Today we are talking about alumni programming for substance use and eating disorder treatment. With us today are Corey Newman. He is the VP of Alumni Services with Nisnik Behavioral Health. We also have with us Jasmine Jackson. She is the Alumni Counselor for Discovery Point Retreat. And certainly last but not least, Patrick Fraser, who is the Alumni Counselor for Eating Disorder Solutions. Thank you everybody and welcome, welcome. Hi there. Hi. Okay, so let's jump right in and talk about this amazing program. Corey, as VP of the entire program, tell us a little bit about the program. Give us an overview. Okay, um, so our alumni program is relatively new, but I think in a very short amount of time, we've managed to build a pretty amazing alumni association. So really what we do is we provide help and support and camaraderie and fellowship after clients discharge from treatment. So as opposed to most treatment centers where you go through some residential, maybe you do some outpatient with them, but then you discharge and you pretty much never hear from them again. Um, we actually, that's where we step in for the most part is when they discharge. Um, and we help keep them in touch with their fellow clients that were in treatment with them. We put them in touch with clients who came before them, who are part, who have been part of the alumni association for a while. Um, so that, you know, the, one of the amazing things we've seen is that the older alumni reach out and provide support for the newer alumni. So really just bridging that connection there um, does wonders for, for people coming out of treatment. Um, go ahead. There's a lot of science um, that talks about the after support coming out of treatment, be it substance use, be it eating disorder treatment, that aftercare is one of the most important pieces in terms of maintaining sobriety. Jasmine, can you tell us a little bit about the significance of this from your point of view from the substance, the substance abuse side of things? Yes, definitely. Um, so it's very important to have an alumni program, in my opinion, um, because it helps our alumni not to relapse. Um, just reaching out, providing that aftercare support with them, checking in with them, making sure they're following up with their doctor's appointments, um, seeing if they need help finding a provider. All of the things that we do in that sense is to help them to maintain long-term recovery. So by providing that additional support that they have through the alumni program, we are able to help them in that area. Let's talk a little bit about connection because all of the things that you're talking about, um, which sound tremendous, you're following up on doctor's appointments. You're making sure day to day that our clients are okay. Um, you have very timed um, schedules where you're going in and actually following up with each and every client. Talk to us a little bit about connection and connection in terms of sobriety. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it's, it's really important, as I mentioned, the follow up with them. So we're following up with them 24 to 48 hours after they've discharged, seven days after they've discharged, 30 days, and then six months, and then so on. Um, the importance of the follow up is because once an, a, an alumni discharges at, say, 24 hours, every, a lot can change in a week's time. A lot can change from just like going back out into the real world, so to speak, you know, and facing those situations that may have caused them to turn to that substance in the first place. So it's, it's definitely shown that the, the aftercare support and the time frames that we reach out to them is very crucial and it's very needed. But we're also able to build those connections with them because we're constantly reaching out. We're constantly having that communication with them. And in turn, it creates friendships. It creates that feeling of we're a family. And that honestly is what is what's allowing our alumni program to just kind of be the amazing program that it's turning in to be. Patrick, what about from the eating disorder solutions side of things in terms of what that alumni program looks like and what that connection after treatment looks like? It is really hard to go from such a really super structured environment and then to just kind of when you're out the door being like, good luck, you've got the skills. Like, I don't think enough people talk about how ridiculously hard that is. And that's kind of where I and all of my other coordinators come in. 
we do not want you to feel alone when you leave us. So as far as the eating disorder aspect, um, if you're having like a hard meal, we are set up for you to just call me and be like, hey, I need help getting through this snack. Can you please sit with me? And I will happily, happily do so. So, and like Jasmine and Corey were both talking about, connection is something that we all take pride in and what we use to the best of our advantage. It even starts when you're in treatment. We like to be a part of that. We like to get to know you when you were still with us. That way the connection is genuine. It isn't some blip or check mark on a list being like, okay, I called this person. It's like, no, I know things about this person. I know who this human is and I want them to be happier and better. So take us through, and Jasmine, this question's gonna go to you too, because you guys are both really boots on the ground with the clients. Take us from day of release. So we have we have now a client who has completed treatment and tell us piece by piece how they understand that they are still connected with where they left, the facility that they left. Jasmine, can you talk us through that? And then Patrick, I'm gonna ask the same thing from also the eating side, eating disorder side of things. Yeah, definitely. So I will say, Noel, it actually starts in treatment. Um, while they're in treatment with us, uh, we're basically introducing the alumni program to them through various different ways, with groups and things like that, just so they are already aware that they have that aftercare support. So just kind of take away some of that anxiety that they may have while they're in treatment so they can actually focus on the reason why they're there. Um, so just knowing that once I discharge out of treatment, I'm gonna have that aftercare support. Um, recently, we started doing a lot of alumni events with the actual clients because I'm inviting them, Patrick's inviting them, we're pulling them in now so that they can know what to expect and they can kind of be familiar with the alumni program. Um, so after they're discharged out of treatment and we start the follow-up calls with them, you know, we're reaching out. And again, as I mentioned, you know, we're just asking them, what does that support look like for you? Because we know each client is different. We know each alumni is different. So we ask different questions. We build those relationships and build those bonds so that we can make sure that we're providing the, the aftercare support that they need. Yep. Totally parrot that with Jasmine. Uh, we get to know your specific issues while you're with us. So you don't have to like, I think for me, and I'm sure to plenty of other people, when you're seeking help from other people, having to tell your whole life story, having to talk about your problems over and over and over again, that is exhausting and a deterrent from actually getting the help you need. We eliminate that problem by seeing you early and knowing what you're going through, and that way you have a familiar face if you want it when you leave. As far as what it looks like when you leave here, again, we contact you within 24 hours being like, okay, I know it's scary to kind of be back in the environment that you were in when you before you came to us, how can I specifically help you? Let's go over the things we talked about while you're in treatment. Um, did you get enough food? Of course, so you're actually sticking to your meal plan, that sort of thing. And that even goes further, like Jasmine said, into organizing these events that we actually hold. Some of the best parts of your healing when you're in treatment is the friends that you make. Yes. Like only someone else going through what you're going through can understand it as succinctly as anyone else that is where we come in to be like let's get all these people together for you guys to hang out and enjoy each other and so you don't have to leave that part of your treatment behind corey it sounds like just from listening to this conversation that what really sets this alumni program apart is how well we get to know our clients and understand them so as they leave they're not feeling alone can you speak a little bit more about that from a programming sense of course. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I do think that's one of the things that sets us apart. Um, Jasmine and Patrick are two of the most caring people that you'll ever meet anywhere. Um, and they really take the time. Yeah, you're welcome, guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> really, they really they do. They really take the time to get to know these clients while they're in treatment. So it's not it's not like the client is discharging and 24 hours later, they're getting a call from a random individual they don't know. They know who Jasmine is. They know who Patrick is. They see him running groups. They, you know, they go to them with problems. They build a rapport before they ever even walk out the door. Um, and then that rapport just continues fluidly after they leave. Um, we, we, know, we know that this is a lifelong thing. Mm. Addiction, there's no cure for addiction or for, you know, and 
the the support that we provide and adding it to everything else for their aftercare meetings, outpatient, follow up with therapists, all those things are great. But the alumni program really solidifies all of those together and creates the best possible plan for success after a client leaves out of treatment. And just for clarity, because I love this part of what you're saying, both Jasmine and Patrick are actively inside our treatment facilities, creating these relationships every day. Is that correct, Jasmine? Yes, it is. Yes. And, it, and it's very important, Noel, because, you know, I feel like at first, initially, you know, sometimes it can be hard to kind of get in there and, you know, allow the clients to actually let you in. By, but by constantly coming around, constantly being there, constantly talking to them, even if it's saying, how are you doing today? Did you get enough sleep? You know, how are you feeling this morning? You know, did you take your meds? Just in, just checking in with them, because a lot of a lot of the clients, you know, they have been through so many things from, you know, traumatic things that has happened to them to just life in general stress. And literally, sometimes all they need is just somebody to just come to them and say, are you OK today? Have you eaten today? You know, and, and you'll be surprised how far that goes just to actually, you know, what I call being human. Just be human and show that you care. It is depressing how much mental health treatment in general is becoming so cold and callous. And everyone that I work with here, we're here because we give a crap. We really want to see you better. We really believe that a huge part of your healing is knowing that there is another human being, a conscious brain, a soul there with you that wants you happy again. Mm -hmm. I agree, Patrick. So on a final note, um, which is really material to everything that we're talking about, if there's someone out there listening to this conversation, whether it be from the substance use side, whether it be from the eating disorder side, um, who is feeling hopeless, who's feeling like there really isn't a way out, we all know what that looks like in terms of being down in that dark hole of, no hope on the other side. Um, let me start with you, Corey, a message of hope for anyone watching this. And then I'd love to hear from all of you as we close the conversation. Yeah. Well, so what I would say is, you know, I'm, I'm in recovery myself and I have a very terrible story like most addicts, um, whether they're in recovery or not. Um, I actually just so happen to be an alumni of Nissan Behavioral Health. Um, coincidentally, but if, you know, we, we've seen miracles happen here. If you need help, reach out. The help is out there. There are people who care. Um, you can get better. You can get better. You just have to take the first step, which I know is very hard, but take the first step and reach out and see the help that's out there. Find the people that want to help you get better. Jasmine? Definitely. What I will say is, as Corey mentioned, it, it is a big step and it is hard for most, especially those that have come to treatment previously and have relapsed, coming back, dealing with that shame and dealing with, you know, just the embarrassment that can be behind that. You know, your life is, is what is important. It should be what is the most important to you. So try not to let the stigmatisms around treatment, around mental health, mental illness, you know, substance use disorders, try not to let those stigmatisms hold you back. You know, if you need that treatment, reach out, whether it's with us, whether it's with another treatment facility, reach out and get that help that you need because you matter. Patrick? You've already taken the step to see what's behind whatever brought you to this specific video with us. You've already made a tremendously difficult step to see what is possible, what you're capable of starting this journey or restarting this journey of recovery. I want you to know that this time, if you go through us, you do not have to do it alone. We will be with you every step of the way. We will be with you how you wish to be with. You have already done the tremendous amount of effort to come here. You do not have to carry the rest of this burden alone. And I promise you, like Corey said, we see miracles happen all the time. And the, it's a miracle that you are alive and here. Let's continue that miracle. The care that you all take with your clients is 
tremendous. And it speaks volumes about the integrity of who you are and the company that you work for. I want to thank you all, Corey, Jasmine, Patrick, for just taking a moment and sharing that so we can let others know that it's not just about treatment. It's about the relationships that you create and the aftercare you receive that keep you in recovery, keep you sober, keep you healthy. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye.